you write that, quote, fascinatingly, the panpsychist interpretation seems to lead to observations of practical results to a degree that physics fundamentalists might call superstitious. Reports of long distance tele telepathy and remote causation are ubiquitous in the general population. I am not convinced, says Yoshibak, that establishing the empirical reality of telepathy would force an update of any part of serious academic physics, but it could trigger an important revolution in both neuroscience and AI from a circuit perspective to a coupled complex resonator paradigm. Are you suggesting that uh, there could be some rigorous uh, mathematical wisdom to panpsychist perspective on the world? So first of all, panpsychism is the perspective that consciousness is inseparable from matter in the universe. And I find panpsychism quite unsatisfying because it does not explain consciousness, but right? it does not explain how this aspect of matter produces it. It's also when I try to formalize panpsychism and write down what it actually means and with a more formal mathematical language, it's very difficult to distinguish it from uh, saying that there is a software side to the world in the same way as there is a software side to what the transistors are doing in your computer. So basically, there is a pattern at a certain coarse graining of the universe that in some reasons of the universe leads to observers that are observing themselves. Right. So panpsychism maybe is not even, when I, I write it down, a position that is distinct from functionalism. But um, intuitively, um, a lot of people feel that the activity of matter itself, of mechanisms in the world, is insufficient to explain it. So uh, it's something that needs to be intrinsic to matter itself. Mm -hmm. And you can, uh, have, apart from this abstract idea, have an experience in which you experience yourself as being the universe, mm -hmm. which I suspect is basically happening because you manage to dissolve the um, division between personal self and mind that you establish as an infant when you construct the personal self and transcend it again and understand how it works. Um, but there is something deeper that is that you feel that you're also sharing a state with other people, that you um, have an experience in which you notice that your personal self is moving into everything else, that you basically look out of the eyes of another person, that um, every agent in the world that is an observer is in some sense you. So if we, and we forget that we are the same agent. So is it that we feel that or do we actually accomplish it? So is telepathy possible? Is it real? So for me, that's is a question that I don't really know the answer to. In uh, Turing's famous 1950 paper in which he describes the Turing test, he does speculate about telepathy, interestingly, and asks himself um, if telepathy is real and he thinks that it very well might be. What uh, it would be the implication for AI systems that try to be intelligent? Because he didn't see a mechanism by which a computer program would become telepathic. And I suspect if telepathy would exist, or if all the reports that uh, you get from people when you ask the normal person on the street, um, I find that very often they uh, say, I have experiences with telepathy. The scientists might not be interested in this and might not have a theory about this, but I have difficulty explaining it away. And so you could say maybe this is a superstition, or maybe it's a false memory, or maybe it's a little bit of psychosis, who knows? Uh, maybe somebody wants to make their own life more interesting or misremember something. But a lot of people report, um, I noticed something terrible happened to my partner, and I know this is exactly the moment it happened, or uh, my child had an accident, and I knew that was happening, and the child was in a different town. Right. So uh, maybe it's a false memory where this is later on, mistakenly attributed, but a lot of people think that this is not the correct explanation. So if something like this was real, what would it mean? It probably would mean that either your body is an antenna that is sending information over all sorts of channels, like um, maybe just electromagnetic um, radio signals that you're sending over long distances, and you get attuned to another person that you spend enough time with to uh, get a few bits out of the ether yeah. to uh, figure out what this person is doing. Or maybe it's also when you are very close to somebody and you become empathetic with them. What happens that is that you go into a resonance state with them, right? Similar to when people go into a seance and they um, go into a trance state and they start shifting a Ouija board around on the table. I think what happens is that they, their minds go 
by their nervous systems into a resonant state in which they basically create something like a shared dream between them. Physical closeness or closeness broadly defined? With physical closeness, it's uh, much easier to experience empathy with someone, yeah. right? It's, I, I suspect it would be difficult for me to have uh, empathy for you if you were in a different town also. Um, how, how would that work? But if you are very close to someone, you pick up all sorts of signals from their body, not just via your eyes, but with your entire body. Mm -hmm. And um, if the nervous system sits on the other side and the intercellular communication sits on the other side and is integrating over all these signals, you can make inferences about the state of the other. And it's not just the personal self that does this via reasoning, but your perceptual system. And what basically happens is that your interact uh, representations are directly interacting. It's the physical um, resonant models of the universe that exist in your nervous system and in your body might go into resonance with others and start sharing some of their states. So you basically buy next to a uh, big next to somebody, you pick up some of their vibes <laughs> and uh, feel without looking at them what they're feeling in this moment. And it's difficult for you uh, if you're very empathetic to detach yourself from it and uh, have an emotional state that is completely independent from your environment. People who are highly empathetic are describing this. And now imagine that uh, a lot of organisms in, in, on this planet have representations of the environment and operate like this, and they are adjacent to each other and overlapping. So there's going to be some degree in which there is basically some chained interaction, and we are uh, forming some slightly shared representation. And no, relatively few neuroscientists who consider this possibility, I think big um, um, a rarity in this regard is uh, Michael Levin, who is mm -hmm. considering these things in earnest. And uh, I stumbled on this train of thought mostly by um, noticing that the tasks of a neuron can be fulfilled by other cells as well. They can send different typed chemical messages and physical messages to their adjacent cells and learn when to do this and when not, make this conditional and become universal function approximators. The only thing that they cannot do is telegraph information over axons very quickly over long distances, right? So neurons in this perspective are specially adapted kind of telegraph cell that uh, has evolved so we can move our muscles very fast but um, our body is in principle able to also make models of the world just much, much slower. Mm -hmm. It's interesting though, that at this time, at least in human history, there seems to be a gap between the tools of science and uh, the ex subjective experience that people report, like you're talking about with telepathy. And it seems like we're not quite there. No, I think that there is no gap between the tools of science and telepathy. Either it's there or it's not, and it's an empirical question. And if it's there, we should be able to detect it in a lab. Mm -hmm. So why is there not a lot of Michael Levins walking around? I, I don't think that Michael Levin is uh, specifically focused on telepathy very much. He is focused on self-organization in uh, living organisms and in brains. Uh, both as a paradigm for development and as a paradigm for information processing. And when you think about how organization processing works in organisms, there is, first of all, radical locality, which means everything is decided locally from the perspective of an individual cell. The individual cell is the agent. And the other one is coherence. Basically, there needs to be some criterion that uh, determines how these cells are interacting in such a way that order emerges on the next level of structure. Mm -hmm. And this principle of coherence of um, imposing constraints that uh, are not uh, validated by the individual parts and lead to coherent structure um, to basically transcendental agency where you form an agent on the next level of organization is uh, crucial in this perspective. It's so cool that radical locality leads to the emergence of complexity at, yeah. at the higher layers. And I think what Mike Levin is looking at is is nothing that is outside of the realm of science in any way. It's just that he is a, a paradigmatic thinker mm -hmm. who develops his own paradigm. Mm -hmm. And most of the neuroscientists are um, using a different paradigm at this point. And this often happens in science that a field is, has a few paradigms in which people try to understand reality and build concepts and make experiments. You're kind of one of those type of paradigmatic thinkers. 